What's up, guys? So I'm doing a little bit of uh, <clears throat> random research here um, about what in a birth chart makes an athlete, makes a good athlete. Um, so at some charts, I pulled up random charts like LeBron James and did some research. And I saw some commonalities. So first of all, Mars is the principle of athleticism and having Mars in you know, close to his midheaven, his mid midheaven's right here, which rules career, having his Mars regardless, you know, you know, it is in Pisces, which isn't typically looked at as a very strong Mars sign, but the fact that it's so close to the MC is very good. But here's what makes his, um, him really tick is one, he has his moon in Aries, you know, sun in Capricorn. That's just like someone that has tons of energy, right? M Venus in Aquarius, Mars in Pisces. But then you have to look at his aspects. This is where it gets really, really, really interesting. So Mars trying Pluto zero degree orb that just gives so much energy and it, and it gives almost this like intensity, intensity and obsession that can be channeled in a very positive way. That's not really threatening, to, threatening to other people, but more inspiring. And he totally has that. Um, also he has his Mars sextile Neptune so there's a little bit of creativity that comes from the way you know he is athletically right and it's in Pisces already so it's channeled in, in kind of a a fluid way I mean I'm a big sports fan the way that he plays is quite Piscean he's very you know he shares the ball a lot he's not like a a ball hog egotistical player and, and that that's kind of part of who he is but at the same time the Aries moon gives him this uh this inner warrior right people with, with Aries moon they have this so aside from that, you know, Pluto also trying the midheaven. So, and yeah, Mars trying the ascendant. So that kind of puts that. So then I also looked at Kevin Durant. Um, we don't have his birth time. Kevin Durant's probably, you know, the second best basketball player in the last decade. And you think, okay, Sun and Sun and Libra, Moon and Taurus, you know, what the what the fuck? How's this guy an athlete? But then you see his Mars, right? Mars rules sports, and it's in retrograde in Aries. Um and furthermore, so Mars and Aries, Mars is in dignity in Aries, meaning that people that have Mars and Aries Aries is a huge indicator of athletics. We don't know what house house anything's in. But then we look at his aspects, and uh we see one of the best ones in my view of for sports, Mars sextile Jupiter, right? Um, that just gives tons of positivity, luck, optimism, just pot, like guardian angel energy to his already strong Mars. So his Mars is super strong, right? Um, Pluto trying his North node and Mars square Uranus, right? He has that one. Um, that's giving lots of, and I think didn't LeBron have that too? But yeah, that Mars square Uranus, that's giving that 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 just gives tons of energy. Um it can make one quite a little bit eccentric and rebellious, but it just it it really needs a channel, right? It's like his his Mars really needs a channel. Um and he's a kind of a re rebellious type of guy regardless. But yeah, Mars square Uranus is definitely one of those those aspects that just gives tons of energy. It gives tons of internal energy that needs an outlet or you just feel really really str stressed and combust. So then I looked at Kawhi Leonard, another NBA player, just to kind of like see what I can see. And, you know, once again, Mars, uh, Sun and Cancer, Moon, Aquarius. Uh, you, know, you wouldn't really think anything of that. But Mars and Leo, a fire sign. Also Venus and Leo and Jupiter and Leo. And his Mars is conjunct his Jupiter and his Venus. So the two benefic planets in astrology, meaning... You could call them the most positive or the ones that like when they influence a planet, they add tons of positivity, luck, all that stuff is Venus and Jupiter. And those are both conjunct as Mars. So this guy, his Mars, which is already in a fire sign. I don't think we know his, his time of birth. No, um, that just that just gives all of the energy of Venus and Jupiter to his Mars and just makes it kind of the superpower. Then we look at his aspects, moon conjunct Saturn that speaks to his hard work ethic. Um, Venus conjunct Mars also is, is very good for combining, you know, it, it's a, it's another energetic hotspot. Um, people who have that, I have that actually, but not as close as he does. Um, and then the big one, 
Mars square Pluto, right? So this is a square. This is one of the biggest squares in astrology that just has so much energy where, where it's like it leads to obsession, over obsession, right? To be the best and need to be the best. Um, lots of darkness. So it, it, it's, it's one of those, I'm not going to talk about the whole psychological mechanism here, but basically it's like, it need, it's kind of like Kevin Durant's um, Uranus square where with, his, with his Mars that it, its attention and action needs to be taken to, be, to resolve it. And one of the best ways, you know, for any of these athletes growing up to resolve these is to just get out and play basketball and to just like to, to get that, that, that intense energy that's within them out and um, doing it through something that's accessible to them in their environment. Aside from that, I just see a lot of oppositions in this chart. Um, yeah, of course, the Mars can jump Jupiter, Sun opposite Uranus. So, yeah. Um, then let's take a look at Michael Jordan. Why not, right? I'm just doing NBA players because that's the sport. I, 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 like, I like football, like soccer football and, and NBA. I don't watch American football anymore. I kind of just gave that up when I moved more kind of just like, don't like, I love, I love the sport, but I don't really like the, the energy around it right now, or it's just kind of just off putting to me how racist it is. And I know you could say the same about the NBA, but I feel like the NBA is way more progressive and way more international. And it's not just an American thing. I get less of a slave owner vibe with the NBA than I get with the NFL. And maybe that's because the NBA is like, 90% black players or something when the NFL there's more white players and it's more there's still more black players but there's a higher percentage of white players so MJ of course you know he's a Sag moon so that just gives us like that this internal fire right LeBron the two best basketball players of all time LeBron and Jordan both fire moons that gives this inner feeling of like I need to get better I need to play I, like it just gives this inner competitive spirit that you feel and that gets you over the edge He's a quiet, high Aquarius sun. Lots of athletes have, have a Aquarius sun. Lots of soccer, football players like Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo. But what's going on with him? He's also just like Kawhi. And I haven't even looked at these full charts before. He's got Mars and Leo. Retrograde also, right? So we, we see all these um, these NBA like superstars with Mars natal retrograde and fire signs. Um, sorry, I have like a little chap on my lip. So I keep licking it. But um. So looking at his, at his aspects, what made him so great? Okay, um, Moon Square Pluto. I think of that as like a real. That's that's another one of those real energetic ones that really kind of gives that that need to 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 be someone that it, it just it's just this dynamism inside, right? There's lots of darkness and intensity um, in his emotional nature, and uh, just a real need to to explode, kind of is what I think about a, a Sag Moon Square Pluto. Holy shit. It's a dynamic personality. It's an intense motherfucker. And uh, Pluto sextile ascendant. Moon trying Mars. So that same moon in Sag is trying Mars. So all the energy he's getting from the, the Mars is trying his moon, which creates an aspect pattern with Pluto. Moon. And uh, Mars. Right? Oh, wait, hold up. Yeah, so overall, because it's a Mars. Yeah, so there's, there's a, a trine between his moon and his Mars. And uh, then Pluto is blah, 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 11 Virgo. And that's only one from his Mars. That's a, okay. So it's a aspect pattern I don't really fully understand, but there is that dynamism, right? Moon trying Mars, right? Um, moon trying Mars. It's linking those two. Um, it's it's linking the Mars of the Pluto, and there's like a a small semi semi sextile. Um, then you have yeah Pluto sextile ascendant. I think we saw that one before. Jupiter conjunct midheaven. <laughs> I mean, people who have Jupiter conjunct midheaven, mid, that just gives you this, that's why he was so marketable, why he was so able to get to the highest of his rank and why he's looked at by every, every, everyone as being the best because Jupiter is the best. Jupiter is expansive. And midheaven, whenever your plant's up there, that represents how you're seen by the public, right? His midheaven being in Pisces, he that's why, where his chart gets really interesting. Now we're getting kind of into Michael Jordan's chart, is that he's 
was seen at least during the time by like this perfect human. We saw anyone who saw the, the Jordan documentary, he was seen as this like kind of perfect Piscean human, right? But a lot of it was kind of an, an illusion as we later found out, which is also Piscean. Um, and it kind of broke down on him. But still, even with all the fucked up things he, he's done and, the, and um, there's still this, this, this real human that people see um, with that Pisces midheaven, right? People saw the documentary and, and still like him. You know, they're like, wow, he was a crazy motherfucker. And he like, you know, he really did a lot of things and pushed people in a lot of different directions. But he's still a good, like, we still love him because he just was who he was. Um, so, okay, what, what else is going on here? Mars stuff. Mars square Neptune. A lot of these athletes have had that. Um, that's another really tense one. That's that's an aspect that typically is like, okay, Mars opposite Saturn. Wow. So Mars square, square, square Neptune is, yeah, these two together meet, like, especially Mars opposite Saturn. That's like where you feel, especially early in life, that your best efforts to move forward get kind of pushed back. Like I know he didn't make his, his, uh, his like high school team when he was a freshman and he's had all these, all these setbacks, but in the end, the energy sh sort of goes away. It's usually around Saturn return, but for him, obviously it was before that. Cause he was in the NBA when he was like, what, 20, 21 or something like that. Um, 20, 21, or at least been four years at UNC. I forget. But regardless, like this is, this is an energy that, that creates um, hard workers. Lots of famous people have Mars opposite Saturn because it makes you work really, really hard early in life because you have all these setbacks that keep pushing you back, but then that energy goes away and you're left with that hard work ethic. So overall, um, lots of similarities here. You can't tell if someone's going to be an athlete by their, their sun or their moon sign, but you can really look at their Mars. Also, I, I've read about Mars in the 12th house for, for whatever reason being linked to athletes and whatnot. Um, Mars in fire houses. So houses one, um, five, nine, you know, Mars on the midheaven, top of the chart, which is also usually the ninth house, but sometimes the tenth house. Um, and Mars in, in the twelfth house, um, and, and fire signs. And then these aspects, these squares are really what we've seen in all these athletes' charts, are what gives that like, you know, you could have all this, but if you don't have the squares, you might not have that that kind of urge and that you might get complacent. You might not have that need to go out and prove to everyone I'm the best and be like so obsessed with your craft, which in a field as competitive as basketball, when you've got like a whole world competing against you, you need to have some type of crazy obsessive personality to really make it to the top. And it's less about sun sign, moon sign. I mean, the moon sign, we've seen how there are like having a fire moon or, you know, I'm sure there's lots of athletes with Capricorn moon. It also depends on the type of sport, you know, um, that will affect it. But yeah, overall it's really Mars and, uh, I've also heard about Sirius, fixed our Sirius being being important too. Regardless, that's that's about it. Hope this video is useful to anyone interested in this in this topic. And uh, have a good day slash week slash whatever.